Do, 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 do. All right, Recta. Again, the shop is quiet. No hammering of metal, no whine of heavy machinery, nothing but the sound of your own footsteps and the low electrical hum of Rector's work terminal. The monitor above the work desk is alive with vibrant imagery. Graphs, technical readouts, and reference images fill the screen. He looks up at you, his face bathed in the blue light of the display. Ah, hello again, my friend. Back for more answers. I can take the time to talk if you can. Uh, I want to continue our discussions from the last time. There are some loose ends that we need to tie up. Yes, my friend, I suppose there are. Go on then, ask your questions, and let us see where your inquiries take us. The last time we spoke, you told me that Essence loss didn't hurt you. I wouldn't know why. Yes, I did tell you that, and I do owe you an explanation. He turns his head slightly, peers at you through the corner of his eye. Tell me, my friend, what do you know about Essence loss and its effect on the metahuman psyche? Uh, essence loss removes your ability to feel anything. It can drive you psychotic if you go too far. He nods. Hmm, yes, that's right. And this detachment can be deeply traumatic for the sufferer. The literature is full of such cases. So basically, like, you are losing your body. <laughs> and so you, you feel less and less because you, 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 you lose your body and you replace it with robots. Eventually, like... I guess, according to the game's fiction, it's like, your body, like, stresses out because there's nothing left. <laughs> and it just starts freaking out. He levels his gaze, focuses it in on your face. There's a smile on his face, but his eyes are devoid of warmth. Now, what would you say if I told you that after my accident and subsequent cyber surgery, I felt no different at all? That even in the beginning, I was completely unchanged. I ask if you knew why. I do, in fact. Would you like to know? That's why I asked. I was born with what society has deemed a psychological defect. Out of fear of social repercussions, I spent most of my life hiding it. I still hide it, even now. The lessons of my childhood were not wasted on me, and I know the value of reputation. But since the accident, I have come to recognize this quirk for what it really is, a selective advantage. Well, don't leave me in suspense. Tell me what you're talking about. Yes, of course. I was diagnosed as a primary psychopath at the age of eight. Cost chase scuttles forward, brushing up against Rector's leg, metal on metal, separated by a thin layer of cloth. The drone's many eyes focus on you. Irising wide open and bathing you in a dull red glare. Well, diagnosed is probably not the correct word. There's no formal diagnosis of psychopath in the DSM. But all of the markers were there. I displayed a complete lack of empathy on the Davis Interpersonal Reactivity Index and I scored a perfect 40 on the PCLR. That's not possible? Because the PCLR... Um, a number of questions on a number of the uh, items on the PCLR relates to past criminal behavior. So, at the age of eight, you are uh, you could not have accumulated enough criminal behavior to be diagnosed a perfect forty at the age of eight. That's not how that works. That's not how the PCR works. Although you can die, you can to an extent. Uh, fairly reliably diagnose even a very small child if you know what you're looking for uh, but psychiatrists and psychologists don't do that because one there's a very small chance that you diagnose wrong and if you diagnose wrong and everybody assumes the little child is a psychopath that's gonna mess up their whole life um, even if you diagnose right uh, most professionals won't diagnose them because they're concerned about the social stigma and all that. So, so people don't do that. So this is this is not. I mean, I I I'm concerned about the story putting this in because it's like, hey, do you even know what the PCR PCLR is? Yeah. So some of this stuff is it relates to like literal criminal behavior, and 
an eight-year-old cannot have been in prison long enough <laughs> to have accumulated a perfect 40 on the PCR. A blood test showed that I had inherited a damaged gene that has been linked with aggressive behavior, and the activity level in my ventromedial prefrontal cortex is vanishingly low. So that part is right. The aggressive behavior, again, he does not exhibit very much aggression. I know he says that he's compartmentalized that and put that into the drone. Um, aggression is a different thing from psychopathy. Uh, if a psychopath is also aggressive, then obviously they're very dangerous. But uh, aggression and psychopathy are kind of separate things. Um, this doesn't match the character, is what I'm saying. Like autism, psychopathy is a spectrum, not a singular disorder. I mean, some people think that. I'm not sure I agree with that. I think psychopathy interacts with a number of environmental and other factors, and thus it exhibits differently in different circumstances. Anyway, he dips his head smiling, but I am definitely on that spectrum. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the person who wrote the story doesn't really understand that. And doesn't really understand what psychopathy is. Uh, okay, and so you think that this condition is the reason why you didn't suffer the trauma of essence loss. Yes, my condition is an advantage, one that protected me from the mental trauma of my accident and subsequent reconstruction. The psychological blow of essence loss, essence loss can be devastating. This mental trauma is ultimately responsible for much of the damage and self-destructive behavior suffered by those who ride the razor's edge. Of course, there is a physical limit to how far the metahuman body can be pushed, but a normal person will reach his mental breaking point far in advance of this. The loss of self, the loss of capacity is too powerful to bear. But you didn't hit that breaking point. No, I did not. Indeed, I'm quite certain that my breaking point does not exist. What does it matter to me if my capacity for empathy and conscience is stripped away? I never possessed either of those qualities in the first place. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole idea of essence messing people up, I'm not sure I... I mean, that's fiction, you know. That's not something that's... Like, that's, that's not part of the real... Psychopathy is a real thing in the real world. Essence is a fictional thing in this game. So, I actually don't think that people would go insane if, if they if you put their brain into a completely robotic body it might take them a while to adjust you might have to help them adjust but I think the brain can adjust anyway uh, all this time you've been calling me my friend does that word even mean anything to you okay you say that your mental condition protected you from the trauma of essence loss got any proof of that all this time you've been calling me my friend does that word even mean anything to you I want to see what he says. Of course it does. The word has always carried a cerebral meaning. I can understand the concept of friendship and what it means to others. I know how important that feeling is, even if I can't experience it myself. People with my condition, my advantage, are not incapable of bonding with others. The only difference is that we do so on a cerebral level, rather than on an emotional one. I enjoy our association and I recognize the advantage of being allies. I've the advantage in our being allies. I like talking to you. What better reason for us to be friends? Okay, you say that your mental condition protected you from the trauma of essence loss. Got any proof of that? I have myself, my own experience. Nearly all of my essence was stripped away in a single stroke, and I didn't even notice. What more do you need? Can you do magic? <laughs> because, yeah, no, like essence, essence, not anyway. Let me let me push him. Actual proof. Your subjective experience doesn't qualify. No, I suppose not. But I know it to be true or the same. My hypothesis makes good sense. I have never possessed the sense of humanity that others hold so dear. If having it stripped away is traumatic, then it stands to reason that I would be protected from that trauma. Uh, yes, but this whole theory of yours is based on anecdotal, anecdotal evidence. You have a sample size of one, Rector. 
Oh, don't. Oh, this is dangerous. <laughs> Why is this dangerous? I'm going to give you five seconds. Why is this a bad idea? Alright, have you figured it out? Because if you challenge him and say, okay, you only have a sample size of one, therefore I don't believe you, then you're telling Rector that if he wants to prove it to you, he needs more samples. How do you get more samples? You get other psychopaths and then you cut them up. <laughs> You find other psychopaths, you cut away all their essence, and you see how they respond. <laughs> so it's 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 dangerous to ask a psychopath to prove they're a psychopath, because how are they going to prove it? By doing terrible things. So it's, it's very difficult to... Well, I mean, it's very easy to prove you're a psychopath, but very dangerous to do, do it in a way that doesn't hurt people. <laughs> Let's see if the game responds the way I would respond. <laughs> mm, yes, that's true. Still, I am certain that time will prove me right. More certain of it than I've ever been of anything. Called a matter of faith, I suppose. I dislike the term, but it applies. Yeah, no, the the, the person writing the story isn't doesn't doesn't think <laughs> doesn't think it through the way I have. I mean, yeah. Do you want me to prove it to you? Let me go find a bunch of people, cut them up, and see what happens. Right, that, that'll prove it to you, right? <laughs> if that's the way you want to play it, then fine. But don't expect me to buy your belief into your belief system if it isn't based on facts. This is, I mean, I don't know why it doesn't give you other options. I mean, I would say, okay. Well, let's say that it's an open hypothesis, and let us continue looking for more data to either prove or disprove it. Uh, there's no way to, there's no need to, to kind of like be snarky about it. You just say, "All right, it's an open hypothesis. We will look for more, more, more evidence." A fair point and a fair criticism. In time, I will endeavor to show you the proof of my beliefs. Until then, think of me as you would any other member of the team. Galbert has her rat, I have this, it is mine, and you cannot take it from me. Um... <laughs> uh, alright. That's a, this is a lot to process, Rector. Yes, I'm certain it is. For what it's worth, I think that you're handling the information rather well. In the past, there were others who were more rigid in their thinking. When I revealed myself to them, they reacted badly. I'm quite pleased that you haven't done the same. Uh, I don't judge my allies on what they are, it's what they do that counts. Yeah, you know how there's a ghoul next door, Rector? <laughs> I don't judge my allies on what they are, it's what they do that counts. <laughs> You're not even the craziest one down here, there's a ghoul next door. <laughs> A man after my own heart. I wish that others were so open-minded. <laughs> I'm not a broken thing to be fixed. I'm exactly what I was meant to be. You don't know how rare it is to find others who accept me as such. Mm. <laughs> and now, if you don't mind, I would like you to leave. He turns his back. He turns back to his work desk. There's work to be done. Uh, of course, Rector. Do your thing. We'll catch up another after another run. Be well. <laughs> also, the goo is more human than you, Rector. <laughs> Gaichu. In the darkness of the cabin, Gaichu is hunched over a pile of keepsakes. He has unpacked most of his box, and the contents are lying strewn about on the f strewn about the floor in a disorganized mess. The goo gingerly picks through them, turning each one over in his fingers as he feels their shapes. He addresses you without looking up. Please mind your step, SCKC. I fear I have made a mess, and many of my possessions are quite delicate. I would be rather upset if you were to accidentally crush any under your feet. After a moment, he places the one he holds, a small ceramic statuette of Daruma, to one side. 
Lifting his face, he touches his brow in salute. I apologize for the mess. Why have you got all this out on the floor? Gaichu gingerly begins collecting his things and arranging them back in the box. I am simply thinking about the chain of events that have brought me to Hong Kong. I've been considering our talk about my former unit, about what my plans are, with regard to their incessant hunts and need for closure. I begin to think that I too need closure. <coughs> An end not only to the hunts, but to our dance around the core issue. One of us must die, and the other might live. And one of us must die, that the other might live. As it is, we are locked in stasis. Yeah, that's what I said last time, dude. They won't be satisfied until either you're dead or they are defeated. How do you plan to accomplish that? That is the question that I have bent my mind to answering since we last spoke. It is not an easy question to answer. My initial thought was to strike at a secure Renraku holding, something valuable enough to draw the attention of the Red Samurai and ensure that Rinraku reported that a ghoul was involved in the mission. It turns out that was not necessary. I began searching the Shadowlands BBS for any jobs against Rinraku holdings here in Hong Kong. Gaiji taps his braille reader with one toe. It is surprisingly, e surprisingly easy to use the matrix when you can read postings with your fingers. Slower than direct interface, but certainly possible. I also began to offer a reward for information on Red Samurai teams known to be in the city. A modest reward, nothing that would attract too much attention, but enough to keep people interested. Gaishu grins thinly, cradling his chin in one hand. This bore fruit. A Red Samurai team arrived here a short time ago, smaller than normal size. Well, sounds like it could be them. It is definitely them. My contact described Ishida and Takagawa perfectly, as well as a new heavy gunner, most likely from another disgraced squad. What's more, he described a woman who looked exactly like Sasaki, but with a scar here on her forehead. Gaichu draws a finger down across his brow over his right eye, precisely where I cut her. I thought you killed her, Gaichu. You only killed one? Now there's four of them? <laughs> I thought you killed two and there was only two left! Alright, so now our job is more difficult than I thought it would be. I thought we just had to kill two of them. No, there are four samurai. Um, is this going to be a stand-up fight then? Gaichu cocks his head, giving you a look of confused disdain. Of course not. Why would I be interested in a fight where I did not stack the odds in my favor? <laughs> I have no intention of allowing them even the slightest chance at victory. I will set an ambush, spring it, and eliminate them. All of them. Oh, okay. I mean, I thought we were just gonna... <laughs> I thought we were gonna shake hands and then cut each other. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna ambush them, sure. Sure. I have found a job I am certain would draw a red samurai response. Rinraku is moving a prototype drone through Hong Kong on the way to a research facility in Chiba. It is of a new design, implementing machine learning and pseudo-intelligence. Gaichu stands, smiling wryly. Something that advanced would certainly attract a Red Samurai team, should someone attempt to steal it. What if another team responds? That would be impossible. Red Samurai are stationed at research facilities, black laboratories, and other high security areas. Renraku has no such facilities in Hong Kong at the moment as most of the holdings of that type are in Taiwan. My former unit will be the only one close enough to respond to, to the threat. The Johnson for this run is a Rinraku scientist escorting the drone. He wishes to have to leave Rinraku's employ, but is unwilling to risk reprisal should he escape on his own. To put it simply, he wishes to make it look like he was killed during a robbery, hence why he wishes the experimental drone stolen. If there's no body, there will be no investigation into his whereabouts. So we can kill two birds with one stone. Gaichu inclines his head in agreement, precisely. 
I can rid myself of my pursuers and he can be free of their yoke. While I owe this man no loyalty, I think I understand his sentiment. Besides, we will be receiving payment for a job. Oh, we're getting paid! Uh, let me ask some questions about the run before I agree, I agree to anything. Very well. Guys, you leans back on his heels, lifting his chin. What would you like to know? How do you know it's not a trap? A fair question, but one with a simple answer. Red Samurai are very risk averse. Part of our training is to always put our lives on the line in defense of the company. Risking this drone in their quest for vengeance would be unthinkable. Gaichu gestures at a stack of chips lying nearby. I did my own digging. The shipping schedules line up perfectly to place the drone in Hong Kong, and Red Samurai would not have the authority to fake such records unless ordered to by their superiors. As I am the unit's private shame, this would not become a larger corporate matter. There's no profit in killing me for the company, only for the unit. How do you know the drone would rate a Red Samurai response? Before I was infected, we escorted and guarded similar projects in the drone division. While I am unsure whether this one belongs to precisely the same research division, they are close enough to make Red Samurai involvement a certainty, in my opinion. Drone research is one of Rinraku's main advantages over larger mega corporations. Ares controls military hardware. Seder Krupp has their heavy industry, but Rinraku is the foremost drone development company in the world. No one else even comes close. Rinraku will deploy Red Samurai to protect that advantage. Rely on it. Alright. Are you certain you can take them all on yourself? <laughs> He's not going to take them all on himself. We're gonna help him. Gaichu shifts, running a hand over his bald head. He looks away, embarrassed. Well, I, uh... <laughs> I was hoping you would help me, you and the rest of the team. <laughs> uh... Yeah... <laughs> oh. I may be able to kill them all myself, it is possible. But as I said before, I intend to give myself every possible advantage. That includes you, Wu, Gobbert, and the rest of the team. More guns means a higher chance of victory, and that's the proper way to lay a trap. <laughs> it sure is. Alright, I know enough. Good. Gaichu shifts uneasily. He seems to be sniffing the air in anticipation. What, may I ask, is your decision? Sounds good to me. When do we leave? As soon as you're ready, I'll message Mr. Johnson and let him know that we are prepared to fake his murder and be ready for our arrival. I suggest you prepare well. The Red Samurai are excellent combatants, not to be taken lightly. Oh, I mean... How much money do I have to prepare well? A thousand bucks, not enough. Well, we're gonna do it anyway. How hard can it be? Are we done? Alright, we're done.